Hello, and in this video we're going to be creating the worm gear mechanism uh, from 4.1.4 uh, modeling mechanical motion for PLTW IED. Uh, we'll be using on tape to do this motion. Uh, so I have a new assembly started uh, within my VEX IQ parts, and I'm going to create, uh, they sell us this uh, worm gear setup here. I'm going to create that in uh, on tape. Uh, so to get started, first we'll add the pieces we need. Uh, so we need this base plate, uh, 36 tooth gear, worm gear, and then these side connectors and a bushing. Uh, so we'll start by just adding all those pieces that we see in. Uh, so we need first that 4x4 base. Put that down. I'm going to zoom out just so I can put everything down. Uh, then I saw I had two of these bases on the side, so I'll put two of those bases down. Uh, I had a shaft bursting, so I'll put that in there. I had one larger 8x by 4 inch shaft. I had one smaller 4x by 2 inch shaft. And I'll put that one by the bursting it goes into. I had a 36 tooth gear that went on the smaller uh, axle, so I'll put it closer to that one. Uh, I had some connectors as well and a worm gear. So I'll get my worm gear. It goes on the larger one, so I'll put it next to that. Uh, and then I had some connecting pieces. I had these one by one connecting pins. I had one and two on one side, and then the same two on the other side. So one, two, one, two. Uh, then I had these corner connector pieces, one on each of my two by two. So I'll put one down by each one of those. Uh, that looks like the pieces I need. If we need to go back, we can always go back and add more. Uh, first, I'll start by fixing uh, this uh, base plate. Uh, you can either put it on the origin or you can just right click and fix it into place. So now it's fixed and it's not going to move. Uh, next, I'll put my uh, connecting pins into this 2x2 two two plate. So if we look over, you can see that on the side and then they go into uh, this piece that goes onto the base. Uh, so I'll start by putting those connecting pins in. So we come up, we get our connecting pin. I'm going to get the fasten mate, and I'm going to get that inner portion right there, and I'm going to put that into my hole. Uh, in this case, it looks like it went in upside down, so i got to flip it around, and now it's in the right location. I'll do the same thing with this one, get that same location again to my hole. Uh, again, i got to flip it, and it's in place. Uh, once I have that set, then I can put my... Uh, connecting uh, corner connector onto it so it's still a fasten mate. I'm going to get the hole and I'm going to bring that down to where it would insert into this connecting pin. Once you see, if we have it, we got to flip it around and that puts it in the right place. You can see it's touching how it should. Hit our green check to accept and I'll change back to my home view or my ISO view. Uh, then we have to put this onto our base plate so I'm going to do another fasten mate. Uh, this time I'm going to get the bottom of my base, so I want to get the part that it's going to enter in, which is going to be right here, that circle. And I, where, does that sent, where does that enter my base plate? It comes down to the circle here. Uh, so this time I put it in. You can see it's in how it should be. Uh, and we have everything we need there. Once I hit the green check, it brings the whole plate with it. Uh, so once we have that in place, we're going to do that same process on the second one. Uh, so same fasten mate, so I'm going to get this guy, get the base there, and put it in the hole. Again, it's up flipped, so i got to flip it around. I'll do the same thing on this one. I get my edge, I put it in the hole, and place it. Again, i got to flip it, and hit my green tip. Uh, then I add my connecting base, so this time I'm going to zoom in, get my connecting base again. I want to get the right portion of it. I want to get the outside of my hole and put it where it needs to go, which is going to be this base, not that outer, but that base where it can connect to. It's flipped upside down, so I got to flip it and green check to accept. Uh, when I do this one, it's going to have to turn when I put it in, so I got to make sure to pay attention to what I click on. So on this one, if I get this side, I'm going to have to get the outside edge when I go to my base. So since I got the right hand side, but it's going to turn around, I don't want the right hole, I want the left hole, which is going to be this corner hole here. So we get that corner hole, and then we can just rotate it around so it's lined up how we need it. Hit our green check, 
and that gives us our base there. Uh, then we have our worm gear that has to go on our axle and then the axle through uh, the hole in my person, that center hole we have there. Uh, so we'll set that up by putting our worm gear on. So if we look back at our picture, uh, you can see it's got that through the top right hole on my uh, on my 2x2 two two, and it's got the worm gear in the middle. So we go back over, we get our worm gear. I'm just going to get the center of my worm gear and line it up with the center of my axle. Uh, right now it's on the edge. We want it in the center and we actually want this to be a cylindrical mate. Uh, so that's going to allow us to drag it to the center. So hit our green check to place it and then since it's a cylindrical mate it can slide wherever it needs to and we can move it if we want. Uh, next we're going to put this into our hole. Actually, we want to keep that as a fasten mate. So I'm going to go back, right click, and make that a fasten mate. So I'm going to edit and make that a fasten mate. And then the next one we'll do as a cylindrical. So to get it in the middle, we can just do an offset in the Z direction. Uh, just looking at it, I'm going to guess it's about one and a quarter. And we'll go down. Uh, that's pretty close. That should be okay for what we're doing for now. Uh, we'll have to move it later on, so that's okay. Uh, then we have a cylindrical mate we're going to do for the axle. So we're going to get the cylindrical mate, which can slide linear and rotate. Uh, on this, I'm going to get the edge, the same center edge of my axle, and I'm going to put that into this top hole. Uh, right now, it's flipped around, so I'm just going to flip my primary axis and green check to put it in place. Uh, since it's a cylindrical mate, if we hit the X, we can just slide it into place. Uh, that's going to be more useful once we have our gear placed on as well. Uh, so next we have this uh, shaft bearing with an axle and a gear. Uh, so to get that set up, I'm just going to start by clicking on my shaft bearing and rotate it around uh, so that's facing the proper direction. So I'm just going to rotate it so it's close. Uh, type 180 to make so it's straight up and hit enter and that rotates around for us. Uh, then I'm going to put my axle in which is a fasten mate uh, to put it into this bearing hole. Uh, so when I do that I'm just going to fasten. Uh, you could get the bottom that way you don't have to flip it. I'm not worried about flipping it so I'm just going to get the top and put it into the center of the hole. We don't want it at the top, we want it in, into the hole. Then I'll flip it around and it locates it into that hole. Uh, next, I'm going to put the shaft bearing into the hole on my base plate. So if we look back at our picture here, uh, you can see it's on the outer edge. It's one in and on the outer edge. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And then we'll put the gear on last so we can make sure it's at the right height. Uh, so when I put the bursting in, it's going to be a revolve mate. So that second one over. And I want the piece of the connector that's going to connect. So I'm actually going to change my view from the bottom just so I can make sure I get the right spot. And I want to put that into that hole we just located that's one in and right there. And once we locate it, we can hit our green check and it places it in the hole. Uh, then finally, we need to put the gear on. Uh, so this is going to be a fasten mate. So I'm going to make sure it's a fasten. Uh, click inside my gear. Make sure you get the center of the hole, and then we want the center of my axle. I'm going to click to place that. Uh, obviously, right now it's too high. You can see it's way, way too high. Uh, so we have to offset it to bring it down. So offset, you can see it's the Z direction, and it's going down, so it's going to be negative. We'll start with negative 1 just to see where that ends up, and that looks to be about the right location. Uh, we'll zoom in and rotate it around. And that looks like it should work. You can move it down a little bit if you want, uh, but that should be functional in this case. So I'm going to hit the green check for now. We will go back and edit here just in a second uh, because we want to line up our teeth. Right now you can see the teeth are biting into uh, that worm gear. That's not going to be very useful. So I'm going to go back to the one I just accepted and edit that fasten mate. Uh, we want to rotate around the axis. Uh, so we want to be able to rotate it around that axis that we're looking at. So we want to rotate around the Z axis. 
Uh, so we'll set all degrees and we'll just type in a value to see how it changes. I did one and it almost got far enough. We'll keep moving it a little bit farther until we get where we need to go. So yours may be a little different, just depends on how you lined up initially. Uh, if we do four, you can see it fits right into those gaps. It falls right into that gap. Uh, we can hit our green check to accept, and that places it in that hole. Uh, so now we have it lined up. We have it in the hole. And then last thing we have to do is add our gear relation. Uh, so similar to what we've done on our previous two, the belt and the spur gear, uh, this is, again, just a gear relation. So when we add our gear relation, uh, we want to select our two mates. So we have the cylindrical and the uh, revolve. Uh, those are our two rotational mates, the only two options you have. Uh, when we do this, uh, one's going to rotate one way, one's going to rotate the opposite direction, so we're going to want to reverse our direction. Uh, and then we have to think about this gear relation. So for every one rotation of this gear, it should move one tooth in our spur gear. Uh, so that relationship is going to be one, two. Uh, and if we count the teeth, or if we remember it's a 36 tooth gear, one to 36, because it's going to take all 36 teeth to do that key rotation. Hit our green check to accept, and then we want to make sure to check our alignment. Sometimes it uh, moves the alignment a little bit when we do this, and it did. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that Fasten 10, and we'll just adjust that alignment again. So I'm just going to make sure it's lined up uh, and in the right location. So now that we got it lined up, we got it in the right location, we got our gear ratio set up. Uh, we're going to use the cylindrical to rotate it and animate it. And all I'm going to do is, when you do the cylindrical, you got to make sure you select the rotational one. And then I'm going to make it a loop so it continues to rotate. We hit play, and you can see as it rotates, the gear is moving through and staying in its proper location. If you want to see it moving faster, uh, you can just change your degrees. Let's say instead of running at 360, I'm going to go 3600. And we can do the same thing, and you can see it moving faster. Uh, but that gives us our worm gear relationship. Uh, so hopefully this helps you to create the worm gear using OnSig. Uh, thank you, and good luck.